Hello, my name's Julian Ridden and welcome to the Moodle Man blog. Uh, in this edition we're going to look at parent roles. One thing that many teachers would like is the ability for a parent to be able to log in and see their child's activity, uh, forum posts, blogs and grades. And by default Moodle doesn't allow us to do that. But we can create a specific role for parents that give them certain permissions we want them to have. So without further ado, let's jump in and show this in action. To actually create a new role, you must be an administrator. So as an administrator, I have a site administration block. What we're going to do is go into Users, Permissions, and we're going to define a role. A role defines what a user can do. Now by default, you actually only have administrator, course creator, teacher, non-editing teacher, student, guest, and authenticated user. But the best thing about roles is you can create them on the fly for specific tasks. And in this site, which is our, our school site, I've created a whole bunch of extra ones, like news poster to allow people to be given access to post news on the homepage, or heads of faculty and directors. Let's create a new one for our parents. Let's just go add a new role, and let's create our new one. So first of all, we have to give it a name. Let's just call it parent role, a short name, parent, nice and easy. A description, just so we can know what this is when we come back to it later. This allows parents to see their child. There we go, activities and reports. Now a legacy role means this role is going to be exactly the same as another role, but with slight variations. We're not going to use that, we're going to start from scratch, so we'll leave that alone. Now the best thing and the worst thing about roles in Moodle is they are extremely granular. We can really choose very specifically what can users do and not do by each activity level. Uh, now I could go through each of these, but we don't have the uh, two days to spare. So what I'm going to do is show you the ones we're going to use for a parent role. And these are to do with users. Uh, what things we want a parent to do? Well, first of all, I'm going to say, look, let's let the parent edit the student's profile. Uh, the profile might have things the parent considers inappropriate, so we'll allow that to happen. Um, parent can see their child's blog. If I click on that uh, box there for allow, it will allow the uh, parent to see that. Um, do I want to see the posts that that student has made? Well, yes, I think it's great that parents can see the forum posts that their students have done. And activity reports. Let's give the parent the ability, ability to see when their child has been online. That's all we have to do, just those boxes. Then we scroll down and click on add new role. What I've now just done is created a new role. And where is it? I'm blind. Here we go. Parent role. So the next question though is how do we apply this? For those of you who've been a little bit familiar with roles already, you must really know that you can usually apply roles at a course level. A teacher is a teacher role at a course. You can be at category level. Well the best thing is we can also apply roles at a user level. So let me show that in action. What I'm going to do is go into users, uh, accounts, I'm going to browse my list of users. What I'm going to do is, I've actually got a student here just called Adam Student or A Test. Uh, I'm actually going to go through, look at Adam Student, and I'm actually going to go and uh, apply a role. Now I'm actually going to apply to the student a user with a parent role, and this is where the parents come in. Now the awful part about this process, of course, is that you actually have to do it per user. Um, there is no wonderful shortcut that will automatically go through and add 100 parents to 100 students. You have to do this manually. What I've now done is assigned my, my test parent in the parent role to this student. Once that's done, we can just go back to the home page. So we've gone through, we've created our permissions, we've gone through and allocated a user to that student. Well, the last thing I have to do as an administrator is what makes it really easy for parents especially is to add what's called the mentees block to the home page. What the mentees block is that allows or mentors or parents to have information. So, whoop, let's see what's going on here. For some reason I can't choose that. That's annoying. Let's turn editing off and back on again. This is why we should test things before we do live demos. There we go. I'm now going to add the mentees block. Let's make it easy for the parent to be able to get information. Now we can go through and, and rename it, so I might just call it parental access. That might be a better term, so we'll do that and that'll give it its name. Alright, I'm now logging out. 
let's now look at what a parent would see. So I'm going to log in as my parent. Each parent will obviously have to have their own name and password for this to work. Now I've logged in as a parent, I can see that the parental access block, or the mentee block as it was called originally, lists my, uh, my child, Adam Student. If I click on that student, I'm now showing their profile. I've given the, the parent the ability to edit the profile if need be, and also to see the activity reports. Best thing here is there's the activity report. Obviously the students done nothing on the main homepage. But if I want to see what's happening in each of the courses, let's say uh, I am test course, I've put some test data here. Activity report, well look, here are the different resources. He hasn't looked at these at all. I can see the grade, the assignments that he's done. I can see uh, the quiz that he's done recently. He got eight uh, in that quiz, how long he spent doing it. I have full access to the student's records. Um, if I want to go through and look at the forum post that my, my child has done, I can even go through and see those forum posts. Notice if I go and try and see the post in context, I still can't get in. It's still locking that data down. I can only see what my child has done, which I think is very important for privacy. So that's a, a very quick breakdown. I'm very much limited by time in these posts. But if you need more information, pre please check out the links in the blog post. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Until next time, I'll see you later.